Good morning, everyone. I'm Pastor Steve Lacey, and it's my pleasure to once again welcome you to the Orangethorpe Christian Church in Fullerton. I hope that you will continue to enjoy our worship services, which we post each and every week, whether we are here in person or whether we are doing totally virtual, always able to find our worship services on our YouTube account at Orangethorpe Christian Church. And talking about special times coming up ahead, as you will hear at the end of my sermon, dates to remember, the next board meeting, oh, well, I'm not preaching about that, May 2nd at 11.30 a.m., but then the importance of, as we enter Holy Week, and we have a Monday, Thursday service, which will be our first one where you will be invited to be here in person if you like, observing all health and safety standards. And we'll also video it, of course, but it will be our first time coming together in our sanctuary. And then, of course, the greatness of Easter Sunday, April 4th, hoping that as many people as possible will join us as we return to live Sunday morning services also, always on video for those who are not ready to come out, cannot come out, or are watching us from afar. So it is good to be here today. And the recall, responsive call to worship. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs and know that the Lord is God. It is God who made us and we are God's children. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates and thank you in his courts with praise. Give thanks to God and praise his name. For the Lord is God and endures forever. His be joined together in joyful, joyful, we adore thee, and let your hearts and your souls sing out. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive our sin and doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the happy chorus, stars of morning take your part. Love divine is reigning o'er us, finding those of tender heart. Ever singing, move we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us sunward in the triumph song of life. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us be joined together in a time of prayer. Lord God, we are gathered together. We are your family. 
Whether we are here in your sanctuary, in your house, or whether we are scattered across the far ends of your world, we are joined together with your Holy Spirit uniting us one and all. It does not matter where we are, whether we sit next to one another, stand side by side, or whether we are scattered, each one of us can reach out and join together by taking the spirit that is within us and uniting with the spirit of all others. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us and for the fact that change is coming to our world, a positive change, a healing miracle finally beginning to take place, and that soon we may be able to return to what we once called a normal life. So, Lord, we thank you and ask that this continue, that the researchers continue to do their work, that the vaccines continue to do theirs, and that soon your house of worship will be filled with joyful noise as your family joins together once again. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Today I'll be reading Psalms 107, 1 through 16. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert waste, finding no way to an inhabited town. Hungry and thirsty, their souls fainted within them. They cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and the hungry, he fills with good things. Some sat in darkness and in gloom, prisoners in misery in irons, for they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. Their hearts were bowed down with hard labor. They fell down with no one to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and gloom and broke their bonds asunder. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works in humankind. For he shatters the doors of bronze and cuts into the bars of iron. May the Lord add a blessing to this reading.
Thank you so much, Casey. It is so great to hear you. Always a pleasure to be back. Uh, the other day, as I was preparing to write this sermon, I was doing a little background research before I actually started writing, which, as any pastor will tell you, is a good thing to do when you are called upon to preach the word of God to the faithful of the flock and to those who might be considering turning their lives over to the Lord. And as I was doing so, I was idly flipping through the pages of my favorite Bible, the one that I have used so often that somehow magically it seems to open right to the page I need whenever I'm seeking biblical answers. And while I was doing so, I came across a psalm which was perfect for beginning today's sermon. Perfect, you say? Because it expressed exactly how I was feeling that day and actually had been feeling for most of the week. For you see, I am not going to hesitate to tell you that it seems this past week that God has been pouring blessings into the lives of Pastor Steve and Susan Lacey. Notice I said, yes, yes, pouring. Not, not just sprinkling here and there, not just scattering here and there, not just a pinch here and there. It's been more like God taking a bucket and pouring it into our lives. Praise be to God. Ah. In response to which, Susan and I have been doing three different things. First of all, we've been continually offering our prayers of thanksgiving, for you always need to take time to share your gratitude with God. And secondly, We've been sharing with others the news of all the great things that our Heavenly Father was doing on our behalf. And finally, thirdly, in return, in response to the blessings we have received, we were doing our best to seek out ways to share those blessings with others, to pass them on, to play them forward, so that others might be uplifted as well. For you see, when blessings come your way, they are always definitely meant to be celebrated, to give thanks for, and to be shared with others. Listen carefully to that again. When blessings come your way, they are always definitely meant to be celebrated, to give thanks for, and to be shared with others. Which is why as I was flipping through my Bible the other day, like I said, I came across Psalm 92, and it expressed exactly what was on my heart. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work, at the words of your hands, 
At the works of your hands, I sing for joy. Now, as I worked on this sermon, I realized that I was very up and exuberant, but I realized perhaps that would not be the case with everyone who would hear the sermon. That most likely there would be two kinds of responses to what I have said so far. On one hand, there would be those who would agree with what I was saying. Those of you who, as I continue on with this sermon, are sitting there on your couches, in your armchairs, in your recliners, which are a lot more comfortable than the wooden pews we have here with our worn out cushions. And you're saying, amen, pastor, preach it, pastor. Well, if we weren't disciples, you would be doing that. That's exactly how I feel. And you would be most likely to do so because your experience is similar to what Susan and I are going through right now. And you know what I'm talking about from personal experience. But on the other hand, I'm sure there may be some of you whose life isn't that way at this time, for whom everything in your life is not turning up roses. It's not going gangbusters and isn't leading you to drop to your knees or to raise your arms in praise to the Lord. But let me assure you that if you stick with me till the end of this sermon, there is going to be something that will be of help and benefit to you as well. And that is because my purpose in this sermon today is not to brag about my own situation, but rather to lead you, to guide you, to direct you on how to keep your focus on God, centered on those great and often God-given things that are happening around you on a regular basis. Things which often we may not be able to see. Sometimes we're unable to comprehend, we may fail to recognize due to the darkness that may have settled in our lives a darkness that may come from the demands, the requirements, the obligations that seem to overwhelm your daily life, from problems that seem to have no solution, conflicts that cannot be resolved, needs that cannot seem to be met no matter how hard you try. But whatever they are, wherever they come from, these sort of things work to take your focus away from God and how God is working in your life each and every day. And that's where the trouble begins and why I think each and every one of you, both those who are celebrating and those who are struggling, why they need a book. Yes, that's right. You need a book like this one right here, which if you were all here in person, I would give to each and every one of you today. A book which might, if I say so myself, might be a life-changing experience for you. For you see, this is not just any book. This is a praise book. A book that can be and will be filled with all the things that are praiseworthy in your life. And believe me, they are there. Now, this particular book is good for this purpose, not because it's just my favorite color, blue, as you can see, not because it has a lion's logo on the front of it, which I happen to be partial to, but also because it has a pen attached to it right here. So you don't have to go searching for one when you have something to write down. And what are you going to write down? You're going to write down the praises that when you have eyes to see and ears to hear, praises that you will discover all around you, you're going to start keeping a record of all the ways that you, your friends, your family, your church is blessed. For example, here is one example that I got from a recent daily devotion. As I drove to work this morning, I was pondering the notion of prayer. As I headed east, I saw the most beautiful sunrise. The sun was gigantic in a beautiful smoky pink. It caused me to pause and thank God for a bright start to this beautiful day. Now, how many of you, and I want you to raise your hand even if you're at home, how many of you love a beautiful sunrise? 
How many of you love a beautiful sunset? And when you see all those colors come together and you didn't even know those colors could all blend that way, that's a blessing from God. Write it down. Thank you for that incredible sunrise this morning. And while you're at it, give thanks for the fact that you woke up this morning. Hey, praise the Lord for that. I woke up this morning. I got up. I'm dressed. Praise the Lord. Ah, it's a blessing. For God has given you another day that's filled with potential, that's filled with possibilities. And write that down too. What I am trying to tell you is the blessings are always there. Look at the people around you, the few people who are here in the sanctuary. Look at the people around you. Do you love these people? And if you are at home, you will have photographs on your wall, on your dressers, in your wallet. Are they of the people who mean the most to you? And do they just kind of make your heart keep beating every time you look at them? Write down the blessing for these people. Right now we have adorable little child running around here in the sanctuary. What a blessing she and her little brother are to this church. Write that down. These voices of children in worship. It's a blessing. So you can see where I'm going with this. There are so many life situations, blessings if you will, that if you go on constantly, if you are going on constantly, that we need to give thanks for, and we need to give praise to God our Father. Here are some more examples on the practical side of life. Here in the Orange County area, 10,000 employees are going back to work for Disneyland. 10,000 people able to return to their normal life and a normal source of income. Praise the Lord. Write that down. Here's another. Susan and I went out to dinner last week and we got to sit down inside. Hey, how many people and I praise the Lord. No fast food, no pickup at the window, no do it ourselves. We had dinner on us and they waited on us. It was marvelous. Praise the Lord. Write it down. How about the weather last week? While the rest of the country was buried in snow, we got the beautiful view of snow-capped mountains far away from us. Ah, and then we had that gentle rain that came in, not thundering, flooding rain, but gentle rain, followed by days with blue skies and 70-degree weather. Is this an incredible place to live? Write it down. All of which leads me to another quote from my daily devotional. They come on my computer, and the ones that really catch my attention I print out and put in a sermon file to be used at a time like this. Listen to this one because it makes my point so well. If you were to make a list of all the moments, things, and people who give us purpose and give us joy, we might just find that we already have all we really need. Listen to that again. If we were to make a list of all the moments, things, and people who give us purpose and give us joy, we might just find that we already have all we really need. Make a list and write it down and then read it over and over again which leads to the main point of today's sermon. What I'm talking about is a change of attitude, whereby each day we look on the bright side of life. We search for the good things. We seek out the positive and we embrace them, which to do so may mean turning off your television news and all the negativity that floods it. They have no intention of being positive and uplifting. That is not their point. Turn it off. Stop reading those morning newspaper articles that you can tell by the headline contain more bad news. Avoid those endless political discussions and debates on Facebook and media that get you nowhere. 
you have to put away the negative. I'm just not going to go there. Now, I'm not so naive that I think this entire process of changing the way we think of using the book will be easy to do, that it will be simple to do, or that everyone will be in the position to do so <coughs> easily. I understand that not everyone is in that place. So if, going back to the darkness that I mentioned earlier, if you are not able to do so at this point in your life, if there are walls up around you, stumbling blocks everywhere, hindrances, barriers, obstructions, Whatever it is that is keeping you from being able to focus on God and his blessing that he wants to bestow you on, bestow on you, then there is a step that comes before writing down praises. And it comes from Luke chapter 11, verses 9 to 10, which talks about when you have a need, and is that you? Do you have needs? When you have a problem, a situation you cannot handle, when you are in over your head, when you are going down for the third time, when you are feeling lost and alone, this is what Jesus Christ says to do. Luke chapter 11. So I, ask, I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Listen to those affirmations, those promises from God to you, to us. To everyone who asks, receives, and he who seeks, finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. In other words, God in the form of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost will provide the help you need to come out of the darkness and into the light so that you can see and open your arms to embrace the blessings that are all around you. To do so, I will ask you to write down the problems and struggles in this book, and then each day to take time to ask God to answer them, to solve them, to take them from you. And then watch the world around you, listen to the people around you, pray to the God that is above and within you, and wait for his answers to come. And they will, and they will solve each and every one of your problems. Now, I have no idea of the timing of how long this will take. It will be different for each and every person. But eventually, instead of writing down problems and questions and concerns, you're going to start writing down your blessings. And soon you're going to find that you have a fantastic source of uplift and encouragement right there for you. These books, I hope, will soon be a vital part of your life, which is why on Easter Sunday, I'm going to give one to everyone in worship. I am going to give one to everyone in worship, and I will arrange to have them delivered to those of you who are still not ready to come out in public or live too far away to come and get them. And as I end this sermon, I'm going to give you the first thing that you can write in your books. The first thing to write in this book that I will soon be giving you in person, talk about blessings. And I'm going to get teary here. We're coming back to church. We're coming home. After a year apart, after a year away, we are returning to our houses of God. Our church family is coming back together. I will be here on Monday, Thursday, 7 p.m., to lead an in-person service. And I hope many of you will be here. And then the great celebration of Easter Sunday. I have been asked to preach that day, and I will be here on Easter Sunday to welcome you. Our building, as you know, holds 225 people. There is plenty of room to keep our distance, to keep our safety standards and all. We have a dining hall that holds 150. We have plenty of room to gather and fellowship afterwards. But what a blessing it is going to be. Thank you, Lord, for finally getting us to this point that we are going to be able to return to our house of God once again. 
your life is filled with blessings. And as you take time to begin to write them, I think your life will be uplifted more and more. As you take time each day, two, three, four times each day, to read through your list and realize that God is pouring his blessings down upon you, just like he has for Susan and I. Amen. So we get ready for our invitation hymn. I have decided to follow Jesus. And for those who are ready to come out, we hope that you will follow us to Monday, Thursday, or Easter Sunday. If not, we hope that you will follow us continually on our YouTube channel on Orange Surf Christian Church. But let's all make a personal commitment as we sing this right now. I have decided to follow Jesus. Casey? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, <coughs> no turning back. He, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Will you decide now? To follow Jesus will you decide now to follow Jesus will you decide now to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back ah tithes and offerings this is an easy one today how many of you, by raising your hand, got your stimulus check this week? How many know that it's going to come next week to you and that soon you will get it? Whether you believe politically or not, whether those checks should have been sent is not the fact. The fact is, is that for Americans everywhere, church members everywhere, individuals will be receiving $1,400 couples $2,800. Talk about a blessing. So the question is, what are you going to do with it? I bet you that's going to cause just a few discussions among couples and families about what shall we do. Think about all the things you can do. Yes, there are bills to pay. Yes, there are things that need to be done on cars and homes. But there are so many great causes, such as the church, that has struggled this last year that certainly could use a portion. So consider carefully, prayerfully, Lord, now that that check has come, or when it does, how can I use it to meet my needs and requirements and to help the church and the incredible work as well? Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise Him our divinity host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. joy we sing all round your table lord our again our tribute bring our home bows we pour
We gather together at this time of communion. And for those of you who are watching the service, if you have not placed communion elements in front of you, put it on pause. Go and find it. It symbolizes the blood of Christ that was spilled for us, his body broken for us, given to us that we might have life, so that you might share with us at this time. Jesus chose wine and bread because as we know in biblical times, that was the most common element that you would find at every meal. And that's why other elements will work well for you at home. As you take this and remember his words, this is my blood spilled for you, my body broken for you, the greatest gift that a person can give his life so that once our life is done here, there will be eternal life for us in heaven above. What a marvelous thing. Elder? Lord Jesus, we bow before you in humility and ask you to examine our heart today. Show us anything that is not pleasing to you. Reveal any secret pride, any unconfessed sin, any rebellion or unforgiveness that may be hindering us, relationship, our relationship with you. We know that we are your beloved children, having received you into our heart and life and having accepted your death as penalty for our sinfulness. The price you paid covered us for all time and our desire to live with you. As we take the bread representing your life that was broken for us, we remember and celebrate your faithfulness to us and to all who all re will receive you. We cannot begin to fathom the agony suffering of your crucifixion, yet you took that pain for us. You died for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your extravagant love and unmerited favor. Thank you for your death gave, to, gave us life, abandoned, abundant life now and eternal life forever. As you instructed your disciples, we too receive this bread in remembrance of you. And in the same way, as we take this cup rep representing your blood, we realize that you were the supreme sacrifice for all of our sin, past, present, and future. Because of your blood shed for us and your body broken for us, we can be free from the power of penalty of sin. Thank you for your victory over death. You took the death that we deserved. You took our punishment, our pain intended, our gain, and today we remember and celebrate that precious gift of life you gave through the blood that was spilled. In your precious name, we say amen. And now let us be joined together as Christians everywhere in the prayer that Jesus gave us as we pray to him, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not in temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now may the Lord God be with you wherever you are. Let his spirit abound in you as you reach out into the world and embrace the blessings that are there waiting to be showered down upon you. May the Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen.